Welcome to the program. Now we begin with President Bola Tinobu's frequent trips abroad, with the recent one being a trip to Brazil and a state visit to France amid another scheduled visit to South Africa for an engagement on December 3 to boost the Nigeria-South Africa Binational Commission. Major opposition parties have faulted the trips, saying the president seems to be more interested in, quote, globe trotting, allegedly wasting taxpayers' money on empty voyages rather than attending to pressing issues back home. The presidency has, in the meantime, fired back, arguing strongly that President Tinubu cannot be a sit-at-home president in the search for foreign direct investments and partnerships to tackle many of the country's economic challenges. Well, many of these trips have come on the back of the lack of ambassadors or top senior Nigerian diplomatic officials to conduct such engagements as President Tinubu is here to appoint new ambassadors 14 months after 83 ambassadors were recalled in September 2023. Nigeria has 109 missions with 76 embassies and 22 high commissions, including 11 consulates globally. There are now reports indicating that he may ride the Senate after his South Africa trip to confirm new ambassadors designate. Tinobu and Vice President Kashim Shatima have between them made 43 trips across 28 countries in the last 18 months. The president alone has visited 17 countries on 30 trips and is currently in France on a state visit with many raising eyebrows on why Nigeria is romancing France when its neighbors like Niger and other countries like Mali, Burkina Faso and Senegal are turning their backs against the French, their former colonial master. Well, to help us take a look at many journeys of President Tinubu, the backlash and against to Nigeria's economy, an image we have joining us in the studio, Ambassador Joe Keshi, a career diplomat who retired and uh, is also a fellow at the Harvard Business School. Uh, he's also been on the several boards of top Nigerian companies, including the United Bank for Africa. Thank you so much, Ambassador, for joining us. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure and compliments of the season. Thank you so much, Ambassador Jokeshi. Well, uh, talk to us about this. Some of the opposition parties are complaining and some Nigerians are saying that they are seeing their president more abroad than in the country. <laughs> You know, both parties are right. Mm. Um, the presidential trips are important to a large extent. They, they help consolidate relationship with uh, the country he's visiting. Uh, it affords the president, you know, to talk to his uh, counterparts in other countries and it enables both countries, you know, to, to strengthen their, you know, their relationship. I, I, I think what the opposition uh, parties are really concerned is that some of these trips are not yielding the kind of results we want to see that reflects, you know, on the, on the, on the economy. And, and so, I, I th but I, I personally think that today, where we are, we should be more strategic in, look, in taking some of these uh, visits. And it's not true that the president cannot uh, stay at home. There have been presidents in some parts of the world that did not even travel for a long, long time because they just decided that they want to focus on issues uh, at home. And here today in this country, we have a lot of issues, you know, we have to address. Some we are not even uh, addressing. And, and the second thing is that when you begin to quantify the outcome and so okay from this trip what did we gain from this trip what did we gain you find out that is a repetition of the the same thing i'm going to look for investors and investors mm -hmm. are they coming or are they not coming we we have to wait you know and uh, and see but you see on this issue of investors also i i have i have a little bit of concern we are not defining very, in very clear terms the areas we want these investors to focus on. Secondly, we keep saying we want investors, we want investors, we want investors. On all our trips, on all the presidential trips, some other countries not only talk of investors, but also ensure that they pass, they sign an agreement with their host country 
on human capital development. The last visit of the Indian Prime Minister, for example, and I've said this in many networks, the last visit of the Indian Prime Minister, for example, to, to Britain, they signed an agreement with the British to train one million Indians on various aspects of technology. Oh, just, uh, and, so and we you, had the same Indian president here. Too. Yes. <laughs> no, what, what ha here it was a just passover because he was mm -hmm. on his way to Brazil. Yeah, it was just yeah, a yeah. stopover. For the summit. So I think that we need to re-strategize some of these things. It's not, we've been talking, Buhari spent eight years. How many trees did Buhari make outside of the country? The same language of we want investors, we want, we want investors. But yeah, but, but the presidency has said that uh, President Tunubu is the chief salesman of Nigeria. Yes, uh, so the, he it has depends on what up. you are selling. Mm. Look, take France. Everything that was done was we want investors. Okay? Nobody talked of trade. What are we trading apart from oil? Yeah, we saw some agreements being signed in that oh, state visit. And do you know how many was, agreements uh, have been signed over the years? And non, uh, you know, uh, they we also had Nigerian investors. Wait, wait, the, wait. They, no, <laughs> men, men of investing them, in no, France, like Zeni Bank and all of that. Fine. Exactly. No, mm. those are services. Mm. That one is perfectly all right, mm. you know. And I must congratulate both um, UB and, um, and Zeni Bank. Bank because what they've done is very strategic. Mm. When you come to think of it, for example, UBA, UBA has its largest, uh, you know, offshore banking in uh, Francophone Africa. Mm -hmm. And so it just makes common sense for them to be in France. Because yeah, no I mean, matter what you say, I heard you in your introduction. Yeah, I mean, you're you a said, former yes, chairman of UBA yourself. Yes, in your introduction, <laughs> you, you were saying that, uh, you know, um, we are strengthening relationship with France. While the, no, they are not really withdrawing. There's a disagreement why, between... Why other West African countries, countries are yes. running away from France? What's happening? Uh, there's a disagreement between government to government. But in terms of people to people, the French are like us. Any Nigerian traveling outside this country will make a stopover in England. Any Francophone, I mean, uh, uh, West African Francophone person Citizens. traveling outside the country, their first port of call is France. Their relationship with France in other areas, in education, in business, the direction of it's uh, France. Well, Just some like of those countries are uh, cutting ties. They are not cutting ties. Severing no. ties, totally, Ambassador. Yes, they are severing. I mean, even Senegal, that's very close. You could see what they are doing. But you see, it's... it's, it's, it's in some of these countries, it's very, very difficult for you to see their ties totally. Mm. Very, very difficult for you to see their ties totally. I'm not saying they are not civilians, but I say I maintain that it's more like government to government and things like that. But when the people look, most of the most of the flights go through to Europe for the Francophone uh, West African Francophone, they go through Paris. All right, interesting. I mean, uh, because Senegal is actually asking yeah. uh, France to uh, close all its uh, bases. I mean, uh, saying that all army bases in the country should be closed. And people are saying what is happening in Mali. People are saying what is happening in Burkina Faso. These people are renaming institutions, it, streets, you know, and everything that were named you know, by the French. And we are seeing President Tinubu going there. Look, so people are beginning to express look, some feelings, no. Ambassador. People are saying that, look, I, uh, they just hope that something is not being done because maybe the French are trying to win back some of these West African Sambu, countries through, through the they, big giant, if Nigeria. They, if the British colonial officers, or those of them who are alive, if they come back to Nigeria mm -hmm. and go to the cities they live in, they won't even, write, they won't even say their names <laughs> on any streets anymore. We've changed all that. So if the French are doing that now, they're actually doing it quite late. But the point I'm trying to make is that it takes quite a lot to really severe relationship with yeah. former colonial, you know, um, masters. In this country, for example, you know, you do not have a lot of uh, British businesses more any, anywhere in this country. But virtually everybody who is somebody in this country has a home in England. All right, so uh, the visit by President Tunubu to France, for example, seems to be a sort of a vote of confidence on uh, President Tunubu and his government by the French, because you could see the way the presidency too, uh, actually tried to create a lavish media outreach from that and, and all of that. Uh, we've seen President Tunubu before the elections last year actually going to France and all of that. Could it be that, I mean, 
Uh, President Tinubu is like one of the very first Nigerian leaders that uh, causes easily to the French. And no, not, that they've not. seen that he's more of a, 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 a friend of the French people than previous presidents that we've had. Maybe previous presidents dealt more with Britain, dealt more with the U.S., but we're having someone who enjoys the patronage and the trust of the French people. If uh, President Babangida is listening to this interview, he'll be smiling in reaction to what uh, you said. Under his uh, leadership, we had a very close relationship with France. And by the way, we've always had a very close relationship with France. Mm -hmm. Obviously, because again, uh, the leaders of those days were very strategic in identifying that with most of our neighbors, you know, um, Francophonic, mm -hmm. we, we really cannot but have a very, we also have a very strong relationship with, uh, with, uh, with France because to resolve some of this crisis in, uh, in ECOWAS, we really had to talk to the French. So we've had a very strong relationship. And that's what I said at the beginning, that these visits like this, you know, um, consolidates existing relationship. And in some cases, expand. Like you've seen the agreements have with the, with the banks. Um, the banks have been yeah. trying to become operational. They've been doing one sort of business there and, and, and so on. But the only thing I, I will say, you know, I've always been worried for a nation like Nigeria. When we go out and sign an agreement to get some loans, and then we are given 300 million, 400 million, 500 million, I, I, I think it's time we stop collecting such uh, or accepting such, uh, you know, because some other countries that are not as large or important as us, when they go on some of these trips, they, they surely do get more in terms of loan and assistance. So well, if, if we, nobody we is to have a to, large appetite for if, if loans, if nobody especially the APC, APC Lefera government, no, have a large is, appetite for foreign loans. Is that, listen, mm. this country is damn too big for anybody outside to be given giving us 300, 400. Listen, yeah. Dangote can give the nation 300 million. <laughs> All right, the so banks so can come together and give yeah. us 300 million. We should be talking of millions of dollars for, because of the things we need to do in this country. All right, so we also had President Tunbo visiting Brazil and he's scheduled to visit South Africa for the Nigeria South Africa by National Commission. Uh, let's talk about um, the trip to Brazil. I mean, we had other countries, the G20 nations, all meeting there. Do you think that we actually made something good out of that trip? Yeah, you know, um, he was invited to attend the, the, uh, the G20 meeting. We are not a member of the G20, mm -hmm. but uh, presidents, host presidents, and incoming presidents, you know, um, uh, are allowed to invite other heads of state they want to attend. And we're one of those that um, I'm not too sure whether it was the Indian who's going to be the next chairman mm -hmm. or who is now the chairman or the Brazilian. But whatever be the case, it's good that we were invited to that meeting. And again, it gives the president an opportunity to, you know, uh, sell, sell Nigeria. But there have been a lot of controversies. I'm sure you saw a number of tapes about, um, about uh, that visit. For, for me, mm -hmm. really, um, th these are just some of the hiccups that uh, President uh, experienced. But I go back to what I said earlier on. Some of these visits, we should be well prepared. And the president should be advised to stick very, very strictly to his script. Presidents make mistakes and jumble up everything together when they take their eyes off their script. Because the people who have written those scripts are experts and they understand exactly what they want from some of these uh, and why they are at that meeting. But when you take your eyes off, the, off your text and then you begin to speak, of course, many presidents have just <laughs> <laughs> make a mess, make a mess of it all. And yeah, that's exactly what, yeah. uh, what happened. But it was nice. You know, these, these conferences, they are not useless. Mm. They have their own usefulness. But, uh, yeah. Ambassador Jokeshi, you and I know that if the president wants to be attending conferences every day throughout the year, he can be doing that because no. they receive invitations no, 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 no. almost every now and Sambo, then. That's why so I people say, are asking, shouldn't we be no, choosing? And what, others are also saying, it's because we don't have ambassadors in place. No, not, that's why the president no, is doing some of these trips. You know, I said we need to be strategic in mm. some of these meetings mm. because, and then we also need to be focused on what we want to gain out of these meetings mm. because, look, we have a plethora of agreements 
that have been signed in the past that have never been implemented. Mm -hmm. Now the president is going to South Africa. Take a look at the Binational Commission of Nigeria and South Africa over the last 10 years. Go through it and look at any of those agreements if one has been implemented. <laughs> And with no consequences. And no consequences. Of course, mm -hmm. there can be because, you know. So we need to begin to look very closely at some of these things that if you sign an agreement, when you get back home, it must be executed. Because that's also what helps, you know. And, and I sincerely hope that the issues they will take up with some of the, with, when they travel with some of these countries are are really very, very, you know, germane to Nigerians, uh, to the people of Nigeria and to mm -hmm. Nigerians' concern. I, can, right. I hope when they go, for example, they'll discuss the issue of visas for Nigerians coming to South Africa. You saw the newspaper report, uh, you know, how much some embassies are making from Nigeria. Yeah, I mean, you know. <laughs> a huge now, I can tell money. you that I personally wrote recently to the Minister of uh, Foreign Affairs that, look, this is getting out of hands. They need to have a conversation with some of these embassies on the amount they are charging Nigerians over visa. These countries can be telling us that uh, um, uh, there's, an Ill, there's a flow, outflow of resources. Yeah. When they are collecting so much and sending to their own country. I mean, we are back to the days of... Uh, the colonial regime, when they just take everything back to their mother, you know, country. All right. So um, you are also part of the Association of uh, Retired Career Ambassadors of Nigeria and so on. Are you people sure. worried that 14 months after President Tinubu is here to appoint new ambassadors? And could this be affecting our diplomatic missions, relations, and ability to be able to do business with the outside world? Look, we are more worried than anybody else. Uh, and our worry is uh, not because we understand that, uh, as you rightly said, the importance of having an ambassador on the ground. We also worry on the, on the effects on the staff of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs themselves. Uh, there are those who have been eminently qualified and ready, you know, just waiting for the ambassadorial appointment to be announced over the last two years. It has not been announced and they are close to retirement. Now, these officers, like those before them, are going to leave office relatively angry and upset that for a nation they served for 35 years, this is how they've ended because of wrong decisions that were made, you know, in the, in the, in the past. But the other side of the story, of course, is that when an ambassador leaves, the most senior officer takes over as a chartered affairs. And, and even in almost all cases, and in some of these countries that the president has visited, we have very top officers who are themselves eminently qualified to be ambassadors, you know, holding Yeah, but, for, but the, the information we are but, having, Ambassador, is that there are some deals or some businesses or some uh, uh, business, I mean, some government uh, to government relations that mere charge the affairs cannot handle, except you need no, 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 uh, ambassadors no, no, no. and all that. Can, no, can you no, clarify? No. no. That, look, if they, 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 in the preparation for the president's visit, the French government dealt all the time with the mission in France, headed by, you know, a very senior officer in that country. So this happened all the time. Our concern is that we need, there are ambassador had more higher, um, what's that word now, more higher visibility and importance okay, than a junior officer. No doubt about that. But those are not even the issue. The issue is that we should not allow our missions to be without ambassadors for such a long time, no matter what happens. And what we do here is that there's no money, there's no money. Yeah, I mean, that's what the foreign minister you. is saying, wait, that we have no, saved more money wait, wait. It by not sending you, ambassadors. It just shows you the fact that, I mean, the, the irony of it all, the president likes to travel, <laughs> but it's not putting in money in foreign policy and foreign mm. affairs. Mm. How do you reconcile both? You are not giving foreign policy the parity it deserves. Mm. And yet you are saying you want investors. Now everybody who went to Paris, to Paris, are going to return back by this weekend. It is now left to the mission. And you are saying you do not have money to maintain those missions, to take care of the diplomats on the ground, to help implement the agreements you signed.
it, it just shows, remember, I had this conversation with you. Yeah. During the last election, we actually invited all the political, all the presidential candidates. I mean, yeah, the five, so, you know. Oh. Yes. That let's have a conversation on foreign policy. Only one or two said they were ready. The key ones said they were not ready. In fact, I met, I met some of them personally. But guess what? What was the first problem President Tunumbu had? Yeah. Foreign policy, policy issue. Yes, <laughs> with ECOWAS and you know, exactly. the chairman. I mean, uh, that's one decision. So that you, many you cannot ignore. To you cannot ignore one. To you handle. cannot be doing anything at all without concerning the fact that your foreign policy is a priority as well. Well, could it be actually that they enjoy the estacos that come with some of these foreign trips? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you and I know better <laughs> that people like going abroad when they're in government. Well, as we try to round off this conversation, Ambassador Jokeshi, we have. Um, 109 missions, 76 embassies, 22 high commissions, and 11 consulates globally. The last government led by former President uh, Muhammadu Buhari has set up a committee chaired by uh, former uh, SGF uh, Pam, Pam Sek. Uh, and PAMSEC too, mm. to actually look at cutting back on these uh, uh, missions and all of that. Uh, could we still revisit that? Or we should continue with uh, these huge numbers? You know, the, the problem the Minister of Foreign Affairs has experienced over the years. Yes, some of the staff members are responsible because they lobby a lot, but the bulk of the problem is from outside and from the presidency itself. Mm -hmm. The ministry sometimes in the past have taken a decision to run smart missions, to reduce the number of staff so as to manage the resources. It yeah. As soon as you are reducing, look, in some small African countries, like when you look at some embassies here, they are not the ambassador and one or two persons mm -hmm. <clears throat> in almost all missions here, except the big ones. The minute you decide that you are going to have one or two, the ambassador and one or two officers abroad, the next day you begin to get pressure from the presidency, from emirs, <laughs> from members of the National Assembly that they want their uh, somebody, relations or friends and to be posted abroad. And before you know it, I give you an example. When I served in Togo at some point, the then permanent secretary reduced the staff in Togo to only three, the ambassador and two of us. A couple of years later, there were 11 officers wow. in Togo. Even when we were in, at, when, uh, we were in Atlanta, Atlanta. We, Atlanta, we were budgeting for no more than five officers, including, uh, you, know, uh, you know, the same presidency insisted that we need to take more people. So it's a systemic problem. It's actually. a systemic problem. <laughs> and Tambu, let me say something. You know, because I attended a meeting of some uh, countries on the Asian world, Latin America recently. They call themselves the Mikita countries and mm -hmm. so on. They gave us an idea of what has helped them in their uh, development trajectory in the last 40 years. There were two issues that I love that they kept stressing. And that was peculiar to each and every one of them. National planning and discipline. Mm. What we do not have in our government business in this country is discipline. Because the day you take a decision that, okay, we are going to run a smart mission in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. I can even tell you my own experience as permanent secretary over this posting business with some minister and a uh, senate president. You know, immediately you take a decision Posting is going to be like, you begin to get pressure from everybody that, no, post my son, post my <laughs> brother, post my cousin. Wow. So here we are. Because wow. we have not learned to be disciplined in the way we run government business. All right. And, uh, I mean, we've continued to pay for that as a country because we're losing more monies and all of that. Well, and just before I let you go, the president is preparing to actually send a list of new... Uh, career and non-career ambassadors to the Senate for clearance and all of that to populate these missions and, and so on. Uh, what are your expectations, actually? Well, my expectations are to, number one, that career officers would hopefully get 75% of the appointment because... <laughs> ah, ah, yes. I you know, and I know that that's unrealistic. No, 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 no. I'm saying, education. you said, you asked me my expectations. Yes. <laughs> and secondly... We've never opposed having politicians. Mm. But for goodness sake, can we have politicians that have the knowledge, that have the experience, and that have the courage 
to be able to be ambassadors. You know, not just uh, anybody who has, uh, who they cannot give an appointment in Nigeria, whether, he's, whether he fits, you know, uh, the, whether he has the character, the qualification, the experience to be ambassador. No, you just decide that that fellow is going to be an ambassador, you know. Some of the non-career ambassadors has it's significantly contributed to a lot of our problems abroad. Well, we, you the know, president has allies that he has to settle <laughs> politically. Well, again, it goes back <laughs> to what I said. The lack of... The, look, others do it for goodness sake. Mm. But they appoint people that have the character, the courage, I mean the courage, the experience. Mm to help the country, not just any Jake and Harry that because you think they're foreign, point, let them go, let, let's send them out of the country. No, it's, it's not helping us. Well, because you go outside, you know, to some missions, you even meet people outside and oh, some of the ambassadors who do come to these countries, when you meet them at uh, events, they begin to tell you about one or two ambassadors who are served in that country. And you, you feel ashamed. Yeah, I mean, we are told some uh, of them go there to do business, uh, buying and selling and doing all sort of that's import why and export. I repeat, uh, give the, one of the, 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 including the, the, the career diplomats, fine. actually, Look, because every, of the state of funding of our missions and all of that. So how do we find a solution to this problem? Look, the people who are here, the diplomats who are here, you can see that almost all of them look very happy serving in Nigeria. Nigeria is, a, is what we describe as a hashi post, you know, and it, carry, it comes with uh, some other extra um, benefits to the officer. The, look, whether in this country or abroad, the government must find a way to treat its people well, which of course in, include very good decent salary, being paid uh, on time, and of course, some amount of discipline. You commit an offense, you pay for it. Not uh, some of the things we see FCC doing that doesn't make sense to anybody. All right. We well, must thank you so much for your immense wealth of knowledge. Uh, Ambassador Jokeshi actually leads the Association of Retired Career Ambassadors of Nigeria, ARCAN, and he is also uh, a former permanent secretary of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and also uh, a former ambassador to several countries. Uh, we must thank you so much for joining us to help us look at some of these issues. And we just hope that President Tinubu actually learns from some of the things that the opposition are saying uh, to reduce some of his foreign trips and see how we can make the best out of the ones that he actually chooses uh, to go to. We must thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you, my pleasure.